Welcome back. In this lesson, we will understand the difference between Euclidean distance and Manhattan distance. So this lesson can be a little bit theoretical, but it's very, very important to understand in order to have a full understanding of the KNN algorithm. So as we said before, one of the most important things when you are using the KNN is how you calculate the distance. And in our implementation, we used the default distance which is the Euclidean distance but we have also the Manhattan distance so what is the Euclidean distance and what is the Manhattan distance in short if you want to know how to choose the distance measurement we use the Euclidean distance if the dimensions are measuring similar properties so for example if you are measuring the width the height and the depth so all the features we have in our data set are using similar properties or have similar properties then it's better to use the Euclidean distance. And we use the Manhattan distance if the dimensions are dissimilar. So for example, if we have age, weight, gender, so these are the features in our data set, then it's better to use the Manhattan distance to calculate the K nearest neighbors. So we need to understand first what do you mean exactly by the Manhattan distance, right? And in order to do so, I'm going to use a very good example coming from I'm going to use a very good example coming from MIT lecture, right? So if we go here, you will see that you will see that this video was published 2017, right? And its name is Introduction to Machine Learning. And this is from MIT 60002, Introduction to Computational Thinking and Data Science, Fall 2016, right? So I'm using the example from the last 10 minutes or so, right? So I'm going to explain what is the professor is saying in this part in order to understand how we can calculate the distance and how to choose the distance and what do we mean exactly by the Manhattan distance okay so this is from MIT so let's go back before we start we need to highlight again what is feature engineering right feature engineering is deciding which features to include and which are just adding noise and it's also Defining how to measure distance between examples and it's deciding how to weight relative importance of Different dimensions of the feature vector. So basically feature engineering is how you can choose the best features From your data set, right? Maybe it's better to choose all the features or to include all the features or it's better to include some of the features So feature engineering is something you gain while working on machine learning project Right? So it's not like one thing that you will come up with from one project or from one lesson. It's an accumulative process. So going back again to the example from MIT lecture. Suppose we want to classify the following three animals as either reptiles or not based on four binary features and one integer feature. Okay. And first we use the Euclidean distance which separated them good enough. So here we have this is the first animal, this is the second animal, and this is the third animal. So as we said, we have four binary features, as you can see here, and one integer feature. And if we used the Euclidean distance, the distance between the rattlesnake, right? This is the rattlesnake, and this is the dart frog, and this is the other snake, okay? So the distance between the rattlesnake and the boa constrictor is 1.414. This is using the Euclidean distance, right? So if we calculate the distance between this and this, you will see that we have 1.414. And the distance between the rattlesnake and the dart frog is 4.24. So as you can see, the distance between this snake and this snake is much, much shorter than the distance between the snake and the frog. And we can do the same here. We can calculate the distance between the dart frog and the two snakes and as you can see the distance is very very long right so using the Euclidean distance the rattlesnake and the boa are much closer to each other than they are to the dart frog so we classified or we separated the reptiles from the non reptiles using the Euclidean distance good enough okay however if we add an alligator we see that the alligator and the dart frog are close to each other using the Euclidean distance. So here we add an animal and this animal is the alligator 
and this is the feature vector for the alligator so this is the feature vector for the snake this is for the frog and this is for the alligator okay we have one one zero one and then four four here represent how many legs we have so here we have four legs for the alligator and we have four legs for the frog and zero legs for the two snakes right and these are four binary feature representing some features okay now if we go back to the alligator you will see that the distance between the rattlesnake and the boa is 1.41 right but now you will see that the distance between the alligator and the dart frog is much closer than the distance between the alligator and the snakes although as we know the alligator is a reptile so it should be classified as a reptile so the distance between the alligator and the snakes should be shorter than the distance between the alligator and the frog but this is not the case here why why the alligator is closer to the dart frog than to the snakes because we can notice that the alligator differs from the frog in three features and from the snakes in only two features so this means it should be closer to the snakes right because here we have five features for each animal okay and we see that the alligator differs from the frog in three of these features and from the snakes in only two features so it should be closer right however the scale on the legs the last feature here is from zero to four while the other features are from zero to one right the last feature is from zero to four while the other features are from zero to one and as we can see the alligator has four legs and the dart frog has four legs while the snakes have zero legs okay so the legs dimension is disproportionately large so that's why we should use the manhattan distance so what is the manhattan distance this figure can make you understand what do we mean exactly by manhattan distance so when we calculate the euclidean distance between this point and this point we need to calculate the square root of this the square root of this we add them together and then we take the square root right to calculate this distance now using the manhattan distance we will just go like this and then go like this so we calculate the steps from x to zero for example and then from zero to y so this is the manhattan distance it's very very easy you are just adding the distances together okay so it's very 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 simple we don't really do any squares we don't we don't really do any square roots we just calculate the distance like this and then like this just like if i tell you that i am here and you are here and i want to come to you so how many steps i need to reach you it's not like this right it's not the euclidean distance the steps will be the number of steps will be this and then this so if this is 5 meters for example and this is 10 meters then i need to go 15 meters to reach you so we should use the manhattan distance because why should we think that the difference in the number of legs is more important than the other features using the euclidean distance you are squaring the distances right so if you have the distance is 4 right the square root of 4 will be 16 so you are giving more and more weight to the features that have large scale like the legs in this example right however if you don't want to use the manhattan distance and you want to stick with the euclidean distance then we can convert all features to binary so all of them have the same weight right so instead of number of legs to be 0 to 4 we will say legs or no so we'll have 0 or 1 if we do so if we convert the legs to be 0 or 1 then we will have 1 here and 1 here and if we calculate the Euclidean distance again we can see that the alligator is much closer to the snakes than to the frog okay so this is feature engineering in this case we perform it feature engineering we looked at the features and then we said we either use the manhattan distance or we need to pre-process the data 
in order to have better results. So it doesn't really matter here what is the machine learning algorithm we are using, right? The pre-processing is about how you can understand your data and understand the limitations and the problems in your data set, okay? So this is why you should understand the difference between Manhattan distance, Euclidean distance, what each hyperparameter in your machine learning model represent and what your data represent and why your model is performing poorly. It's not about running it on larger data and larger data and so on. No, you should understand your data set and try to perform feature engineering in a professional way, right? So this is a very, very important lesson. And if you want to check the MIT lecture, I will attach it in the resources for this lecture. It's very, very useful. It talks about so many things, not only KNN, but if you want to check the 10 minutes on KNN and on Euclidean and Manhattan distance, you can do so. So in the next lesson, we will understand the importance of feature scaling and standardization. And of course, we will make use of Stack Overflow to help us understand better why feature scaling and standardization is very important. So let's go.